um, I want to say special thanks to to him even before he comes on, you know, for for making the time out to do this interview because the season is so busy, especially when you're a producer and this is your hottest morning making time of the year. And he's taking time out of his schedule to be here with me, and I really, really appreciate him. I want to say, without no further ado, good day to the man, Dada. You're on the show. Hey Jay, what's going on? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm great, as a matter of fact. You're great. Yeah. I'm so glad to have you here on Kakoti. Um, people might probably think I I just brought you in because you know, but I've worked with you, you know, very closely for right. for a while, and <laughs> I remember you were one of my first interviews that I did when I started off in radio years ago. I don't know if you remember. When I used to do the Big Ben show. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said yes. I was never going to bring it up. You know, yes. I used to run a, a segment. Uh, yes. and, and that Big Ben was the one who was the first person to actually introduce you or me to you um, via, uh, it was via phone. You know, it was a phone, va- phone um, um, connection and whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. You remember that interview? Yeah, yeah, of course. That was long. That was over nine years ago. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yes, yes. And and I remember when I, I I spoke to you, you were so, you know, humble and you would, you know, right. stop up in the music thing and you would try to do your thing. And people right. were trying to tell me, you don't know Dada, Dada run the show. You don't know Dada. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, I was so happy when years later, I finally got to meet you. And yeah. I met you because... Uh, my significant other is one of your very good friends. Yeah. And it just he made that connection, and and that was it. You know, we we we've, we've been cool. Uh, you've worked with my sister very closely for her music yeah. career, um, yep. and and it's 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 a pleasure. And I want to congratulate you one time for what you you're doing right now, what you've been doing, and I feel now that you you put in some respect upon it and and everybody needs to give you your much respect and welcome to kakoti yeah it's a pleasure to be here on your prestigious program i appreciate it you know just um you reaching out and you know what i mean um giving me the opportunity to be on there you know what i mean so i could we could talk and have a discussion you know what i mean so yeah happy to be here you know i warned you before before the show start i tell you you know you like to parlay yeah, we don't we don't the palace so much tonight. <laughs> we love to talk, and whenever whenever we've met up in Dada's studio, Dada starts talking and talking, and then an hour later we're like, um, people think I'm the talker, right? And we're like, we haven't even started working on what we're actually supposed to be working on. But don't worry, today we have a show in store for you, and I I, I want to just you know you know you you. You put out this song, family, and we wanna we wanna talk a little bit about that. But before we do that, Dada, you have your kakotina, where your kakoti? It's right there, right there. Yes. Sir. I hear that mug. I hear that mug. Very right? colorful, so. Why am I colorful, so? The red still is digital. The red there is right there. <laughs> <laughs> you have all different colors in that mug, and I suspect it representing the whole Caribbean, right? Yeah, Caribbean unity. Yep. <laughs> like, yes, I. Um, i family that's that's what's up um i yeah. always like to start my show off getting to know my guests getting to know what they're about who they are right. um and i want to find out about you um i, I want to know when people want to know who that is if somebody says who the hell is this data who is this krishna person right. what what is the first thing you want people to remember when they when they think about you who is data lawrence well um, in the, in the simplest way I could put it, Dada is just uh, Krishna. First and foremost, is just a little humble little guy from Dominica. You know, Roso, Bafese to be exact for those Dominicans, you know what I mean? Um, come from humble beginnings, you know, from what some would say is a ghetto area, but we don't want to use the term ghetto. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But coming from that kind of area and, you know, basically starting my music career, really humble from a humble sense mm-hmm. and putting in the effort to where i am today 
and that's who that I is. Pretty much. In a in a nutshell. Um, yeah. but guys, if you just log in on, don't forget to share the link. And if you'd like to connect with Dada, uh, be it for business, be it for um for entertainment, be it for you probably think he could, whatever it is that you decide mm. you want to come. <laughs> well it's up to you you know it's up to you to answer appropriately right yep. his links i've shared his his um his social media handles so they're actually in the link um i think it could be probably below depends on what you're looking at it could be below you or above you so if you're looking on um on 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 the, your computer you might see it differently than if you're looking at it on your phone but you can actually just um Go up in there, click on the social media handles, and you can get connected with Dada. Dada, where did you grow up? In Dominica, in Buffett City, my community, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Pretty and, much, yeah. And what did you want to be as a child? Well, I mean, as a child, to be honest, music wasn't really the first option, I would say. Music wasn't an option at all because, you know, your parents kind of trying to put you in on a path that will, you know, something more in systematic, something more in terms of being in the system, like government jobs or, you know, what they call secure type of careers. You know what I mean? That's basically what did your mom want to become? What, what, what was it she had in the back of her A brain? doctor, a doctor, a lawyer. They do the usual thing, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> a okay. fireman. I want to ask you a question while we're on that. Were you a done scat in school or were you actually somebody that could, that was, that would learn, you know? Were you at, what type of a child you were in school? I mean, in school, I, I mean, I was... If you had to say, you know, if you were I can't be a dunce cat and producing monster hits, you know. That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> so in school, you know, in school, I, I, I was a bright... You know, I, not was, I am a bright person. I, not just about school. That's how I am. Mm -hmm. I'm brilliant. You know what I mean? I'm a philosopher, too. You know that. Uh, well, yeah. you I first hear lyrics. <laughs> you have lyrics can yeah, done, and yeah, and, and wh what made you want to go into music? I mean, I guess I always had a well. One thing my my parents or my mother in particular or particular always used to say is that from when I, from ever since I could remember, you know, we had a little radio with cassette. You remember cassette like ancient history, now, right? Mm -hmm. So we used to have all little parties and all these kind of things, and I would be the DJ, you know, under using, you know, try to DJ with my cassette and them kind of thing. Yeah, the interest was there, you know, trying to mix my WCK songs together with the serenades, and you know what I mean, in a world of party and things. So I guess from there, there was always an, a, an interest in um in music and understanding how it works because I used to try to DJ at what five six years old, you know what I mean? Oh, wow. so, yeah. And and growing up at home in, in, in Dominica, were there any people who inspired you to get into music? I mean, at the beginning, not really, you know, but the interest was was always there. I had a, a keen interest in, in music and wanting to know how it works and why it sounds like how it sounds, you know, and the whole science about music, you know what I mean? So in the beginning stages of that not really so when i started to put things together and people start seeing my potential and stuff then there were people that saw the, the little talents that was you know that was sprouting and mm -hmm. then they were like yeah but you're really good and think you should continue a few people have like walkers from wck i make mention of him he was one of the first people that kind of saw my potential at age 12 or 13 years old you know what i mean wow and yeah and, and from ever since then you know what i mean it, it was I guess after a while, the more you showcase your um, your abilities to people, then some people, more people, start to come on the train of lending that kind of um, support in a sense of to you know to continue doing what you're doing and you know that kind of thing. Right, right. So, so you made mention of walkers, um, but there were were there any producers in Dominica that you kind of looked up to, or you probably wondered how do they do what they do? Were oh, absolutely. I mean, WCK. I mean, I wouldn't say they were producers per se, but I, I looked up to the group, you know what I mean? And I always, you know, used to feel like I, I, I was interested in trying to understand how did they do what they did, because WCK was my biggest influence in music locally at that time, especially during my teens, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So WCK was my the, the greatest influence on me at the time, and I always wanted to know how the science worked for CK. So... Yes, 
Um, but they wasn't really producers. They were a group, you know what I mean? So their work was kind of put together as group efforts. You know what I mean? So, but I wanted to be that person that could be the one-man band, like the one-man group in a sense, you know what I mean? So I look at CK as something, as something that I wanted to be. I wanted to be CK in a sense, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you wanted to be a whole group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of executing music, yeah, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. for them, it was collaborative efforts. They mm -hmm. did like Keith and Cornell and all, all the rest. So I wanted to be all of them in one. You know Somebody used I mean? to play keyboard for them. Is that true? That was that is lit, man. In 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 the events of things, that is lit. Really, I didn't yeah. know that. That was two thousand and nine. I only had a few months with them. A few months, not long. So that are, how many instruments can you play? I can play one instrument um officially, but every other thing unofficially. <laughs> <Are you saying? laughs> It is unofficially, officially, you, you like you, you know a little bit of something, right? That's what you mean by that. I can play it on the keyboard, so I can play a violin on the keyboard, oh. I can play bass on the keyboard, right? I can play everything on the keyboard, but you know, you know, the keyboard. you know, Dominica tongue, you oh, sha, yeah, yes, okay. So, so you can play the keyboard and you, yeah. you, you produce all other instruments or i guess the, the music behind all other right. instruments yeah, from, yeah. From the keyboard. why did you decide because you said you you started djing you had a love for wck you wanted to be WCK. why did you decide i'm going to become a producer and and what ignited that fire to producing music and not just probably being in a band or, yeah or a singer well i mean growing up as a child right um, I don't want to say that I didn't dabble in singing. I used to try my little singing thing. Sing a I song. Uh, song. But Jay, shut, shut. <laughs> I want to hear. After, okay? After. After. <laughs> yeah, please. <sir. laughs> so, um, so, I also, I mean, obviously, as a child, you hear multiple styles of music growing up, right? So, there's reggae, there's dance, all and other things. Hip-hop. So back in the time when I was growing up, you know, there's always the DMXs and all these kind of people going on. You know what I mean? So uh, we used to try to rap. I used to try to rap at one point. And then I used to try to sing dance hall at one other point. Like, I used to try to put my big voice like Bounty Killer. I thought I was Bounty Killer at one point. You know what I mean? With my big voice and all that kind of thing. But then I guess that is just, all I was just the different expressions that I was trying to come through from me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, Not... At the, at the time, I didn't know exactly what I was doing or what direction I wanted to go. But all I know is that I wanted to be the person in the back room that can create all of this. Because dancehall also had a major influence on me as well growing up, right? What, so, what did did dancehall have? Musically, um, I think the, the rhythms, man, the beats. That's the reason why I am the first person in Dominica to start calling my my projects rhythms because i come from dance hall that great influence that dance hard on me everything is a rhythm a rhythm a rhythm a rhythm this rhythm that rhythm this rhythm that rhythm so i started doing the same thing with my with my work i started giving them names so you see zaboka rhythm and melanin rhythm and this rhythm and that rhythm and all these things because and that is directly from dance hall okay. you know what i mean all right now you started doing all of this all of this music thing like you know like our parents probably called it your parents probably called it back then what did your parents your mom especially what did they how did they what did they feel or how did they feel about you going into music i mean my mom you know she didn't she wasn't she didn't need to discourage me she wasn't a person that was a, a discouraging factor mm -hmm. um i guess and she was she encouraged you know she facilitated me as well because at the time she saw it as me not being on the streets you know what i mean so she would have always preferred to me to be inside even though on the computer in fruity loops making to -dum, to -dum, to -dum, noise in my head every day and saying oh I, I i she can't sleep and all them kind of things she would but you know i guess her way of showing the support is by not discouraging me from whatever it is i was in at the moment you know what i mean how but important now, was to you though how important was her support you know to you i mean it is very important because i mean if my mother of all people kind of support me in something like that you know what i mean then what sense does it even make you know what i mean so um it was really important yeah 
Wow. All right. So, so Dada decides that he's calling all his well, all track that really is reading. Um, he's put together this whole um studio. Um, what is it called? Cotton, cotton, what? cotton, cotton Grove. Cotton. And his name after my my village in Buffalo State. That's yeah. where I come from. Cotton Grove. So, so you put together a studio. You call it Cotton Grove, and you start producing music. What was some of the what was some of the, the genres or the sort sort of the style of music that came out of Cotton Grove? Everything, you know what I mean. To uh, I have a philosophy that everything I can hear, I can I supposed to be able to reproduce. You know what I mean. And I listen to rock as well. You know what I mean. Rock music, yeah. I tried my hand in rock as well. Absolutely, of course. Linkin Park. Um, Fallout Boy, all these things, yeah, I listen to these people a lot, you know what I mean, so, um, I'm a huge fan of Linkin Park, by the way, you know what I mean, so, um, which, 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 um, which songs are your favorite of Linkin Park? Crawling, mm -hmm. Numb, mm -hmm. um, I know Linkin Park too, you know, oh, you know Linkin Park as well, so, I'm there you go, too, you know. I'm a major fan of Linkin Park, you okay, know I mean? major, uh, did you cry when the, when the lead singer died? I was disappointed, man, because I was say, so you know upset I mean? that they were coming up. Yeah, that's they had a new project brewing, and I was just like, "Yeah, hey, you know what I mean." Oh, the world! I was disappointed, man. You know what I mean? As a Linkin Park fan, and not a just come Linkin Park fan, like long. You know what I mean? From ever since they just came out, ever since I saw them on VH1 for the first time, what in two thousand and one or two? Wow, three. That's ever since then. So we've crawling the first version of crawling. You know. Yeah. So Everybody was still young in the band. They didn't have all that beard and thing. They didn't have these things. <laughs> okay, you so know what I mean? you started right. putting on music and you were dabbling in every single thing. What were right. some of the acts that you worked with in, in, in locally? Um, well, I work with, you know, Calypso is really popular back home in Dominica, right? Mm -hmm. So I work with all of the top Calypsonians, yeah. Um, well, there's the Bouillon as well. Bouillon is really big down here. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I work with all of the top acts, um, WCK, Triple K, as a matter of fact, um, and all of the different artists, you know, back then. Um, Triple K in particular, I was a project of mine at one point, I would say like from 2005, 6, 7, and 8. Um, so those years there was when I was kind of um, laying my mark on Triple K musically, in a sense, in the back room. Okay. So, yeah, so during these, that period was when I was producing heavily for Triple K and giving them all of their most popular or most significant um, tracks, I would say, to date. You know, what that kind of defined their sound and their style and all these kind of things came wow. from, from, um, from what I was doing. Because what I was doing back then didn't start with Triple K. I was practicing from all the time before that, creating them... them different kind of styles and things so when i started working with them i kind of just give them all of what i had because it was like a testing phase to see if what if i wasn't crazy right see if it didn't really work and it worked right <laughs> <laughs> well obviously it did obviously it did now yeah. you decided that that dominica was not enough was it a financial thing or was it that i want to spread my wings i want to fly dominica is not enough and you branch out where did you touch first? Where did you decide that, hey, I'm going to work with so And How did that happen? I mean, absolutely. It was a, a bit of both financially and Dominica wasn't um, enough, adequate for my career. Um, because as to answer the first part of the question, um, Dominica is a really small market. You know what I mean? And we are seasonal to that, which makes it even smaller. Mm -hmm. So financially, it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. You make some money sometime, and then after a while, it's like, you know, it's off season, so you don't make anything per se, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. So financially, that's a problem. Number two, Dominica being not adequate, yeah, because, like, you know what I mean? I feel like my music need to need to transcend boundaries, you know what I mean? To go places, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that's one of the reasons why I pursued uh, um, developing my career in the islands. So the first place I went um, to do that was in St. Lucia in 2009 or 10. And the first year I went, I, I participated in St. Lucia's Carnival and thing. 
I won the groovy soccer money with an axe that I work with. Wow. Yeah. First wow. time. Wow. And and also that year I won I, I worked with an artist from St. Thomas and won road match in St. Thomas that same year. How did that make you feel? That I'm a crazy. What <laughs> I was working on is, is, is good, it can work, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now now you started working with soccer artists, um, uh, especially a soccer artist from Trinidad, um, right. and, and the, you know the lower lower islands of the Caribbean. Why did you decide that now you were jumping from bouillon or some sort of like a bouillon beat or sort of a reading kind of from the dancehall aspect, and now you're you, you're touching a little bit of the soccer? Why did you decide to venture there? Or was it somebody that approached you? How did you get on the soccer scene? Okay, so what happened is, you know, I always wanted to, I feel like my music needs to transcend boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. That's my perception. So I don't feel like I should stay in one box. So Bouillon wasn't the beginning and the end for Dada, you know what I mean? Neither was Calypso. Soka is always, was a major fact, a major part of that expression as well. Why? So, because I feel like Soka is something that, First of all, all of the islands participate in soccer, right? Soccer is a much bigger market, so financially it's a better business to go in. Mm -hmm. right? That is one. And two, I feel like the impact that I wanted to make, I want to make, not wanted, but want to make, um, I could get it from soccer, seeing that soccer is in all of the islands and um, is making headway internationally. You know what I mean? And being from the Caribbean, being from Dominica in particular, then we, now we automatically have a stick in the soccer brand you know what i mean so it made sense wow. for me to do that it was a natural progression wow okay that, so, so you worked with uh flipo you worked with right. Pablo, uh, uh mm -hmm. just to name, just to name a few you had a, a, a really big hit with with well he was flipo now he's what's his help me with his name Azaria. Azaria. I can, I, you know i didn't want to mess it up i was right. this close to messing it up i was like <laughs> tell it out right, right. Um, uh, but he's rebranded and, and it's okay to rebrand. He's, he's rebranded his, his whole uh, style and everything. So you right. worked in, you had a hit. Um, then you, then you did, um, you did the melanin rhythm, which was also a, a big hit. Um, uh, that was last year carnival. And right. then this year, you know, you, I, I know whenever I speak to you or whenever I've spoken to you, you know, we speak on WhatsApp occasionally you check in right. because you call my kids, your nephews. I don't well, know. Of course, of course. But yeah. You check in on me now and again and stuff and you tell you you say um there's a there's a term you use you say something in the what what you say, say it? something green what 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 is the term you what's right, the term so, right, so we it boiling something yes yes <laughs> and i was like whatever dada give me a break <laughs> something always boiling for you you know and you connected with skinny fabulous right and you guys put together a bomb uh, that has exploded across the the caribbean right um yeah. how did that connection happen i mean skinny is a guy that we had our runnings in uh, meaning we met each other before um before this collaboration here yeah, we because i do a lot of work in vinci as well you know what i mean so um vinci i won a few soccer monarchs in vinci i rest skinny was the opponent skinny to be our opponent right mm -hmm. um from the people that i work with mm -hmm. so we beat him we beat him a few times you know what i mean <laughs> you beat him a few times you know about that well how do you think he'll feel um hearing you say that you you beat him a few times is it true you know what i mean <laughs> i mean it's not, it's not no vibe we, we we cool we cool but what i'm saying is that there is skinny know of me because of um because of my work, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So right. So because I mean you know, there's always a way that you have to meet somebody, right? So this is how we met. We uh -huh. met, so you met him because you beat him. Yeah. Well 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 you know what? You know what? He, he beat us two at times while we beat him though. Well let him tell us about that. You say let him tell us about that. Go on and say good afternoon. A good evening to Skinny Fabulous, uh, the man himself, joining us. Hi, Skinny. How are you? Well, yeah. <laughs> Microphone check, 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 check. Yes. Yeah, boy. You're on, you're on, you're live and in charge. Well, apparently, I was waiting in the lobby. 
Yes. Uh, you know. uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you know, I know you were you were you were in on the conversation. You were listening, you know, to to us uh, discuss and and you know, um, Dada, who was not expecting you to be on this today, um, is he was just talking about how he bit you, you know, a couple of times. Yes, you know, I, I I have to have to make a little um, amendment to to, to to some of those comments, you know. I mean, yeah, he, he, I mean, he beat us too. He beat us too. You know what I mean, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I knew of I knew of that through some of his um his musical work, um namely the um the one from um was that last year or year before the one with um the one with the one thing to make money. Oh, yeah, that, that one. Yeah, that one year before two thousand seventeen. Right. So this is Zabuka and um probably one of those groovy rhythms, but um yeah yeah. yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the 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 the, the but that was a year I wasn't competing that year. Um, <laughs> he he recruits himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you know, um, and then and then the, the 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 year before that when I competed would have been two thousand fifteen. You beat us. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah, 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 wash off that, yeah, 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 we get blue. No, no, we're not here. This is not a fighting show. <laughs> no, no, that's a family, that's family, you know. Yes, no, yes. no, no, but this, 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 see, this is, this is, this is the, this is the true test and, and, and strength of, of, of working together without having any egos get in the way. And I think this is why a project like this turned out the way it did because. I think at, 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 at the point at which we decided that it could be a project, every single person involved literally melted away their ego. If they had egos before, all those egos went out the door, which is, which is really brilliant. And I think, I think the, the, the sincere energy behind the, the, the origin of the track, the inception of it, the production of it from scratch, I think that energy was so pure and so genuine. I think that energy bled straight into the track, mm -hmm. and and persons could feel it. It is not it's not a calculated collaboration. It's not a prescribed one. It's just one that was naturally meant to be. What I have here talking because I wanted to see his face. You know when you talk My about face. his face, that face no. when you talk about the music and stuff. Um, and I just want to welcome you, say and say thanks. You know, thanks to you, Skinny. I know you have like a such a busy schedule, and I've been harassing you to come on it. And I message you, and you're like, talk to Muriel, talk to this person, and and get it. Yeah. Let me know. And I'm so appreciative for you coming on. I know you have a busy schedule. You're gonna pop in and pop off, but thanks for coming on because I feel that you have helped put data out there in a, on a different limelight on a different limelight and and it's your two small island fellas no matter how you put it you yeah. are small island you know they always press the small islanders you know they always yeah. always have sure. to work so much harder to get to that level and and you listened to that reading you listened to that that song and you came out with with so much how did you what was going through your head when you heard the rhythm from family well first of all i when i when i got the rhythm this is how steven got in the picture so steven sent me the the instrumental and um i didn't even listen to that first and then say, just going back to the conversation i, I pressed play and like i said hey boy huh i should get steven up you don't think so <laughs> but we have Stephen in the lobby group. Stephen right now on an airplane. Right now here on an airplane. <laughs> okay. Right. So when I when I heard it, um, I mean, initially I skipped over the track because Stephen sends me a lot of things. But this one stood out from the time I went back in the conversation and I pressed play. I realized no, this this has a particular vibe. I, I felt like it, the identity of it was booyah. But there was also a bounce in it that that it, it wasn't it was not overkill of the of the boom. It was a really decent merge of 
of what we would know as as a, as a power soaker rhythm and what I also understand as being us. So when, I, when it hit me, it didn't hit me as like full blown. Yeah, it hit me as, yo, this is the perfect blend. So musically speaking, I saw I saw the the avenue for a fusion of the bat without any voices, anything on it. I saw the rhythm itself spoke to me in like a in a collaborative way. Uh, so you're you're very familiar with bouillon music, yes. I would assume. Uh, uh, and and what what made it diff so different? Because you said it wasn't harsh. There was no. There, it wasn't loud. It wasn't. It, there was something else in it. What made you feel that there was something? What about it that was so unique? Um, no, I mean, you, 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 the, the, the thing is, without even me, I didn't even know it was, um, it was that as rhythm in us. So when I heard it, automatically, I knew just from the sound, there's a thing that you can't really describe. Like if you, if you were to hear, uh, what St. Lucian's called Denry segment, it's not I something I could describe, but it's something in the percussion and their, their loud use of toms and timpanis that will identify it as a, as a Denry segment. And so I can't pinpoint what instrument made it booyah, but it's just the progression of chords and synths and whatever. You just right. know. You know right. As a musician, you just know. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and how quick it was for you to say, okay, I'm going to do something. Um, well, when I heard it, I, I'm, a, I'm a person, I don't necessarily write before studio. I write on the way to studio or in the studio. So um, on, the way, and in, on the way to studio in New York, uh, I, I found the, the, the chorus hook, which is the lay, 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 and, and, and at first I thought it was very elementary and kind of nursery rhyme -ish, but the simplicity of it, the simplicity of repeating that lay, 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 is actually a part of the successful ingredient to that chorus. Yeah. And so when I went in the studio, I, I, I initially, I initially recorded it as just, uh, a solo song. I, I recorded it like the hook and everything, like hmm. And then listening back to the chorus and going into the verse, I said, "This is not a song or a message that should be told or conveyed by one person." Because at that point in time, when you listen back the product and you tell yourself, "Nah, this message is bigger than me. I can't. I I don't care. Represent this message." You know what I mean? And so it was at that point that I stopped the recording and said, "Okay." Let me start from top, and then I began to to sort a picture of Marshall's parts and sort a picture of Galen's parts. If, if he were to be in the song, how how would it flow? And it was that type of mimicking and 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 you know, it's my name, everybody. The play, the play. Yes, I started to channel everybody's energy into it too. So I'm like, yeah, this could really work. And from the time I sent it to, I sent it to Marshall first. And he was like immediately, he was like, mm-hmm, this is it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's go. Mm -hmm. And then sent it to, to Galen, and Galen was a, was a little bit busy at the time, so he never got back until like a day after. And then when he got back, he was like, yeah, boom, this is a go. And from there, that's, that's uh, amazingly, everybody recorded their parts in different studios, in different parts of the world. You know, I was in New York, Galen was in, in, in San Fernando, Trinidad, and I think Marshall was in L.A., I think. Wow. Wow. So yeah. how quickly did, did this all come together in terms of getting the lyrics together? Um, well, the, the, the structure of it was already in place in terms of from its demo stage. So verses and A, a chorus and B chorus, those things were in place. Um, there was a kind of placement holder for Gallen, but we know Gallen as a person who, who likes to put his own that sort of identity and, and flair to it. So um, that space was was eventually removed so Galen could put his personality on it, you know. Um, and then after that, it was just a matter of sending vocals and making shifts with, with Dada. And now this is the part I have to give Dada some, some, um, some credit because we, as our own personalities and our own perfectionist traits, we gave him a very hard time in terms of back and forth now. Anytime he send one thing, he'll have to go back and change something because Galen felt like he was too this or Marshall felt like he was not enough this or, and I would come in and say that will happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it was that type of scenario. So I mean, this the the, the project itself, I would say, took about forty eight hours from the time we decided that we are going to do it, and this is the deadline. Is it took about forty eight hours to put it together. Now, now you get all this music data. You get all of this this artists. You get skinny because I'm sure when when you when 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 Stephen made the connection and Stephen sent it to skinny. You probably was just anticipating skinny. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean. Remember, music is patterns, right? So when I, I uh, everything has a pattern about it. You know what I mean? So I know paid attention to the patterns of the of the, you know of what, ever since me and skinny um Stephen spoke about it in Inception, right? Um, I kind of suspected that something mm -hmm. of that nature would have happened. You know what I mean? I didn't trust him with anything, but I felt like the type of the rhythm would have had something like that, that kind of vibe. It always spoke to me at that level. You know what I mean? So knowing Skinny, Skinny is a genius, right? I always have that, that respect for him. And I look at him in, in that way. So I know that he would have done something like that, of that magnitude. So... It, it, it's like something that I was expecting because I, I, as a producer, I don't really have a fresh hold of my expectations from artists, right? I just allow them. Okay. They do what they feel. Now you, get, now you get these three acts on a song and you start putting it together. And as, as Skinny was just saying, you had all of these personalities culminating and giving you a hard time. Right. How did you feel because being under so much pressure from three major acts you know, yeah. on, a, on your rhythm, how did you feel in that moment? There was no pressure, though, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know if some producers would look at it as a hard time. That's not a hard time. That That's the business. That's what it is, you know what I mean? I know they expect a certain level of professionalism from me, you know what I mean, to deliver uh, on the product, you know what I mean? Likewise, there's a certain expectation that I have from myself as well, you know what I mean, to deliver the best product possible. So to me, it was, I was just enjoying the ride. Whenever they needed me up, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, even if I wanted to sleep, but, you know, I never had no stress. Yeah, I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw a message that I said, was that you cannot sleep tonight, uh, not tonight. Yeah, sleep tomorrow, <laughs> not, not tonight. Because half, half of these conversations, they, they were happening at, at 3 in the morning. Eh? These, yeah. these were like 12 o'clock lunchtime conversations. Eh? Wow. Of course, somebody calling me. Um... Okay, all right. Okay, so he'll come back. Up. He'll come back. Up. Um, right. he had to drop off. Uh, okay, he's back. I think he's back on. He in the lobby again. He have a hard time with that. <laughs> in the lobby again. I'm uh, gonna see if I can. Uh, I can get him back on. Um, because he was just talking to us about you know yeah. the logistics of 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 putting this together and, and messaging you. Mm, oh, this whole thing please up, yes. I, I hear you now. You hear me? This is called and disrupt. Okay. All right. So we're going to try that again. We're going to try getting him um, back on. Back to you, um, Dara, for just a little moment. You you get these people on. You know you have to be professional. All of these, um, like they say, all of these tantrums and everything coming through. Everybody, how did you decide that, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do when did it hit you that this was gonna blow up? Um, I would say you know by the by how the track was coming together. You know what I mean? Like when I was in the process of arranging and editing the vocals and all the different you know the science, mm -hmm. I felt like it was I wasn't getting bored from the track. You know what I mean? Because usually on that journey on on that process, you know what I mean? That it's, it's it's very it, you get fatigue right from the track. Yeah. Yes, definitely. You know what I mean? So I never felt any sense of fatigue at all. I always felt like the track was catchy and the rhythm was bouncing nice and everything was complementing each other. And you know what I mean? I think the bun Bungie's verses was really something that kind of helped me, I guess, in terms of the track completing as a whole unit, like something that would have definitely be something big. Bungie's verses, as a matter of fact, I'll make special mention of it. Um, it like it, it, it take the track to another level, you know what I mean? Because it was the last bunch of vocals that I got, okay. you know. So I was listening to Marshall all the time and Skinny all the time and all these things, but Bungie was last. Mm -hmm. When I got Bungie's tracks, 
I was like, yo, yo, that track going and do something crazy, you know what I mean? And it, it happened, you know. Okay, I think we got um we got skinny coming back on. Okay. Now now you coming back? Yes. Tell them girlfriends to leave you alone, eh? Because you with you jail jail with one cap. Right. Okay, so so you guys come together and you decide that you're gonna release it. What were expecting that sort of response? Whoever wants to go. I I mean I mean for for me I you know over the years, right? You would, you would, as an artist, even as a producer, too. I, I, I expect that you would learn to tell yourself that we don't produce hits. We we produce and we put out music, and then people decide what those hits are. As, as funny as that may sound, you may tell yourself this song is a hit, show hit, and then when you release it, it tanks or it, it doesn't blow up in the way that you wanted it to, and so. I've went through that so many times that I don't calculate what is a hit before it becomes a hit, right? And mm -hmm. and equally, sometimes I say a song might be bush. That's bush. That's a beat track. <laughs> and then you put it out, and then people take it up on it. Whoops! That's a big track out there. So like I I I stay away from the idea of of of, of calling it before it's dropped. <laughs> but in this case, in this case, I mean, I knew it was, it was, I knew it was a good song, and I knew it was, it would have been an impactful song. But the, what was interesting and what was the shock, was the space of time, and the yeah. growth rate of the song. That yeah. was honestly the shock because we dropped the song four thirty on a Thursday, yeah. or whatever that Friday, was. Friday, Friday, Friday. We dropped it four thirty yeah. Friday, and by ten o'clock the night. It was in the feds being pulled up on a wheel and thing, and it was like instant. In two days, it was like the biggest song in Trinidad. Period. Wow, wow. We, I, I just wanna, I just wanna bring in um and shout out some of um the people who are viewing right about now. We have DJ Spawner who's on. Um, DJ Spawner is actually sending some words for you, Skinny. He's saying, he's saying y'all drinking tea and the man drinking rum. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Why a mug? Like why a mug, skinny? I'm not about that tea life. I I'm not calling it this summer. I'm gonna be sipping too. And I'm sipping. Uh, you know when you enter the dad, you gotta you gotta do what the trainees do. So yeah. <laughs> so so you're you're currently promoting the song in in Trinidad or or yeah. just just the entire I guess with a road match or, or well, how, however you guys do it in terms of the the, the Trini scene. Um, what is the response like, and what do you think? Where do you think this song is go going to go? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. Um, I, again, because I, I I I don't want to be presumptuous. I'm being hopeful. Mm -hmm. Um, and and if I'm to just follow the pattern of things, I I think the legs of the song will extend to the end of Carnival, and we will cross the finish line very strongly. Um, obviously there's some there is some technicalities and some some maneuvering that that we are looking into where there's some chatter about if the song is actually eligible to be a, a road march contender and so after after looking into it um there there, there are chatters from from different angles that that they're telling us that it is actually eligible due to the fact that the song is two-thirds trini meaning there are three persons in the song and mechanically speaking Mm -hmm. Um, the song is, is 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 split between the three artists, so no, I don't own it more than than Marshall owns it. Benji doesn't own it more than I own it. It's actually split straight equally. It means then that the song is two thirds Trinidadian. Yeah. Okay, so so how does that work? Like, why was there ch even chatter about whether or not it would be a contender? Like, because of so mad. If Carnival Tuesday was next Tuesday, it would undoubtedly be the road match. Wow. Wow. That 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 that's that is why. Because if, if everybody who is on the ground who's in Trinidad 
if 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 we were to put road march two weeks from now do you would have no doubt in your head what that number one song would be and so you were forced to ask the question is this song really eligible to take that title oh wow wow so so i, I mentioned the two third stream um, I, I remember reading somewhere where Fayan, who is now the um the the chief um she's the chairman of the the Soka Monarch Committee, um, uh -huh. wanted more islands, or more island representation. And, and, and in addition to that, she also was, um, was, was asking for more um, power music because yeah. it seems to be taken, taken over. How do you feel about releasing this powerhouse, like knowing that you're falling sort of right in line with exactly what the organization is kind of looking for? How do you feel about that? I mean, it, it coincides. It coincides nicely, but uh, it, I I don't want to get into into that space where I I would kind of subscribe to the we should put power over Groovy or put Groovy over power because after one time is another two and and I think I, I don't want to discredit or, or discount the efforts and the value of of the persons doing groovy soccer because although they might not be the jumping pulse of a small island party they uh, they hold the whole a great place in our fets same way you know it's, it's important we cannot we cannot jump 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 for three hours we need to slow down and groove and bounce too so i don't I don't, I don't get into that, that, that conversation about Groovy versus Power. But if you're asking me personally, I am one of the last Power Rangers. I believe in you. <laughs> you're Power Ranger? Right I am a Power Ranger. Which one you are, the Black Ranger or the White one? I am the Black Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> that is me, you know? Uh -huh. And so, and so but it's, it's good. Why, why, why the narrative is working now is because for the last couple of years, you, you have found that Groovy Soaker... Um, and the lovely, lovely Disney World sounding things. Those those type of music, um, they've been dominating the airwaves and the and the parties. And what we found, or what I find, is is more and more you have social media type of parties and stush runway type of parties because the music is reflective of that. Come inside, effect, look pretty, take selfies. It's not that jump, put on a short pants, put on your sneakers type of music. So the music does not allow you to put on sneakers and jump. You're going to put on your heels and come and pose, which is what some of the groovy soaker will make you do because it's so lovely of you nice and I mean, I like it too. I suspect that's why you all came to Dominica and you touch on the little boy a little bit because, you know, it's not a, it's not no high heels kind of music. No, it's your, what, what, what is your Air Max and your Converse? <laughs> yeah. And that's yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, and I think if if we get in a position where we actually get to hold a title of some sort, even if it's just if it's not first, if it's second, once we're in that race, in the end, I think it would be a major accomplishment for 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 small islands. It will be a major accomplishment for myself, for 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 Vinci Music, for Bunya. And, and it, it would show that 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 unity really is the way to go. And when we when we collaborate, whether through efforts but on the engineering side or the vocal side or the production side, I think we end up with the better result when we think as a one unit in in the Caribbean. You know what I mean? So hopefully, when we reach that finish line, we finish in strong. And yeah. I will be pushing for it. Yes, Skinny. I know you have a busy schedule, and I'm so thankful that you could come on. Uh, and, and touch a little bit uh, with us um, on faculty. You know, we're going to have you sometime when your schedule slows down. We're going to have you come yeah. back on and we're going to have a little chat. I want to get to when you. Um, after my, after me, let me tell you when to call me. Call me on. Um, on um, Try to make a date one time. Carnival Thursday. Hold on. Just after. like that, she'll call you and she break up my whole show there and she caught you uh -huh. off. Call you on Carnival Tuesday. Thursday. No. Right, call me the Thursday after Carnival, and then you'll ask me and Dada, how does it feel to be the real match? <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yeah. Our next interview will be on Thursday after Carnival. Yeah. Call me Thursday, and ask me how it feels. 
<laughs> right. Okay, then. Thanks again, Skinny, for joining us. Uh, take care and enjoy your tour in in, in All right. Uh, All right. Bye. Oh my God. Thanks again, uh, Skinny, for for joining us. Dada, back back to you. I mean, you are the 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 wizard. You're the mastermind. You know, you're the creator of because without the music, the lyrics just stay in the, in the air, right? right? How does it feel knowing that um, so many people validate your music now? I mean, you know, like I said, music works in patterns, right? So I kind of, I mean, I'm not trying to make it look like take the, trying to take the fun in the music and the whole spontaneous reactions. But if you study the pattern of consumption of the music, you know what I mean? Then you will know what to give people when they're ready for it. You will know the when people are willing to accept. And as Kenny was saying, you know, the whole groove you have a power, power over groove. It, they both have their time. You know what I mean? So I feel like it was a build up to the people wanting that kind of a different sound. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So I am just the chef that pulled the trigger on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So so let's just say you your your song or, or your, your track wins mm -hmm. what is the first thing you would do first first thing go free and don't think about it the very first thing you would do i mean just more of the same though you know what i mean it would help me confirm that my formula is working and i should do more of it you know what i mean because there's an appetite for it so yeah. that's why i see it mm -hmm. Now your your song has been on on iTunes ever since ever since it got released. Um, right. At one time it was number two, then it quickly climbed up to number one. Um, it's it's gone up and down the charts. Now um, there was a bit of a controversy as it relates to how it was actually put out there in terms of um, I I didn't really want to get into it with skinny because I feel like um, you will be able to to clarify right how, right everything with us um and i want to sort of get an understanding as to how because when you look for it it's listed on the reggae if you look for it on on itunes um there was a controversy as to whether or not it was bouillon whether it was soca um it was also listed as soca or at least made to look like it was a soca song but if you hear skinny talk he makes a lot of mention of the bouillon aspect of it because uh, that is what really triggered you know all of his his creative juices right, right. What exactly how does that work how does the explain to us because a lot of us um don't know i i mean i know i love music i know i love to play music i've been on radio for years and i played you know i, I represent uh all different genres of music but can you explain to us because some of us we may not understand um the the language in the in the music industry and on what and why is it that we cannot find um uh this song listed on the buyo or or soca okay. uh, and it's listed on the right can you explain that to us um so to answer the first part of the question which is the song being on itunes i think the song debuted at number two you know on itunes reggae you know that's a massive achievement for any for a song of that nature you know what i mean to um debut at that number which is second to number one right um and the track be becoming being um coming at number one in just a few hours after that um so what it is it basically the music business and the whole genre classification of all these things is about numbers metrics you have to have you need to have a certain number a certain number of listen um streaming i won't say listen because we're living we need we in the internet age now it's digital age so it's streaming right yeah. You need to have a certain number of streams and downloads on these platforms so that the iTunes and the Spotify's and these people there can, you know, basically be a better able to classify or to categorize what type of sound is what. Because right now they only see us as all Caribbean people, you know what I mean? And reggae being the, the, the dominant force from the Caribbean. So, um and to them i mean so that doesn't sound like reggae neither does boo you know, in a sense whatever but i don't know if they, it's from the caribbean you know what i mean so seeing that you come from that region right reggae is what is basically the outstanding um genre from these parts and recognized genre from these parts so we kind of just fit in there by default in a sense right 
Mm-hmm. So seeing that the song was able to create that kind of um, attention, um, that spike, that spike that it created um, from the downloads and the streams and all these things, people buying the track and all them kind of thing. They so what happened is it it it, it, it gives a, 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 a validation. Yeah, yeah, it kind of shows the people on Spotify and all these platforms yeah, that you know there's this type of music has a following that that streams and downloads. But the reason why it happened in the first place is, is because um majority of the people majority of the ways that we consume music in the Caribbean is from live performances, right? Especially in the soca and and that type of music realm. It's always about fetching and live performances. All people hardly ever put a track buys buys and streams that's what it's about buying and streaming when it comes to these things right so the so we, we, you will see our tracks have 10 million views or on youtube 20 million views on youtube but that's just on youtube you know what i mean on the streaming platforms and, and all these things they don't really go and buy as much as they would come to affect so it's a it's a it's a movement that we as artists and people in the industry need to sensitize people about going to educate them about the importance of partaking in the streaming you know the official streaming becoming a member becoming a paid user of spotify rather than just being a free user all these things help you know what i mean because going on spotify and itunes as just a random person without having an account you just streaming it you know it you know they don't really i mean you must give itunes and this platform some incentives to look at your case right so mm-hmm. if, you, if you are a paid member and all that and that membership kind of goes from the region well like, you know all people all people like a free niche yeah they also oh. to break that cycle to bring right. that mentality that they have you know because it'll help the music grow as well so so that so. has definitely affected the different genres the smaller genres like you have the kadas you have the the soca you have bouillon you have um you know music from the jab jab you know all of this has definitely um, um, sort of almost discredit, you know, these genres because in terms of how I look at how, how you explain to me at least how I'm understanding mm-hmm. it is that the bigger world out there with all the billions of people, mm-hmm. they pretty much, they don't know anything about our music and they right. identify as that. And, and that seems to be causing problems internally yeah, where, of course. So, so you find people getting upset, or uh, and 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 wanting to to associate their uh, a certain sound with a specific genre. Now there yeah. was a whole conflict uh, going on in terms of whether or not um, your song family was considered mm-hmm. uh, a soca song or was it considered bouillon. Skinny kind of touched on it a little bit. Right. Right. It? explanation but um how, how tell us about the process of that uh, how did it come to that i mean i understand the concern you know what i mean because i direct the people around here in dominica and it's not a it's not a situation that is unique to dominica right but the people i don't expect the people around here to understand music business to that extent to them music business is they you have a song on the radio and yeah it's good just mm-hmm. saying that is not how the music business works you know, and um, the music business is not different for Dominica as opposed to Trinidad or anywhere else. The music business is music business, yeah, in general. So I understand the concern for people wanting the proper classification of it, but in on in the international scene, which is the standard that we are aspiring to be at, um, Buyo is non-existent. You know what I mean? And um, it's not no disrespect to Dominica. It just is what it is. Um, Dominican people can want what they want. That is okay. Go in and sit down in a meeting with Spotify or with iTunes people and tell them, you know what, oh, I want it to be a booyo, okay, a booyo. And it, it is a ridiculous statement because there's a there's a system, there's a way it works. You know what I mean? And um, I, I guess the people that was trying to make controversy, quote unquote, from that is people that have no knowledge of music business and what what really matters in the music business. So the, the 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 controversy to me is it's a ridiculous one, yeah. Now, do you think there's a little bit more education that needs to go on in terms of how we we view or how we accept our music? 
I mean, it's just a matter of numbers. Yeah, do we, do we need a whole lot of education? It's not just a little bit, a lot. Because we don't know. We just know music business because somebody has to pay a license because you copyright, somebody can sue you, and that is what. So nobody wants to get sued, right? So everybody will say, oh, that is music business. So it's a, it's a whole, I think the way that, you know, we will... Um, we were approached with music business was in a negative kind of a way, in a sense. You know what I mean? Because music business as uh, and talent is is uh, is two different things. You know what I mean? So we are talents. We see it back home as talent. You just have talent doing your thing, but then to make it on Spotify and iTunes and the Grammys and the Billboard, that's music business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's different. So we need to understand there's a difference between being just a talent and actually making progress in the music industry which is industry goes with business right mm -hmm. music career goes with business it does those are business terms so we need to properly understand how to um what exactly is going on in this business do you do um, you feel, yeah. how do you feel about your your country dominica in terms of the entertainment aspect of the and how they ac how they accept or how how the leaders because at the end of the day, the leaders have a major role. How are they accepting of music in terms of um, assisting to get the word out there? Even I, I know I remember sitting down um, in, in in Coptal by 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 Mac Murray, you know, mm -hmm. and explaining. And and I think there's a lot of misconception. There's so much, um, yeah, yeah. you know, there's so much mis. Because I'll give you, I, I'll put myself in it because I'm a, I'm not a musician, right? But I do a lot of acts, and I remember, you know, him saying to me, "You know, you could be you you've lost thousands of dollars um, in, in revenue because um, you you are not only not registered, you are also not um, the, the the stations who are supposed to um, who pay right pay the license. license. They don't pay the license. The license right? Right. So there's a lot of a lot of piracy." Um, that that goes on for lack of a better term, and yeah. and as a musician, how do you feel that there's enough work being done locally, um, to assist you and the others like you to preserve what you what you do and also reward you because at the end of the day, uh, making music is not about putting two two sticks and on a, on a fan going pang 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 pang. Exactly, it requires a lot of expensive equipment, a lot of a, a huge investment. Um, do you feel like sufficient is being done to 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 allow you to make a living full time in music in Dominica? I mean, as far as the radio part goes, um, so uh, again, it goes back to awareness. You know what I mean? People need to be aware that this is a business, and uh, when you have a radio station, you're not just playing music for fun. You know, a radio station um, needs to pay a license because that's how the artist gets paid. You know what I mean? And, and um, just like they pay a the broadcasting license for them to broadcast legally, they need to pay a license to use content, music content, on the radio. So the government, just like everybody else in Dominica, I would say needs to be educated on this business. And this is very important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. but not just because it's uh the government means they know everything about everything you know what i mean there are things that they need to be themselves too right they need to, they need to be educated on, on that and the importance of of these things and put and then they can put proper policies in place to protect the artists and the intellectual properties and and, and all these kind of things so i think education is important at this point all right um so so let, tell me you have done this project you've completed this project are there any other things that you're working on is there something that you want to tell us you know you know the you know the little something um what is what is in store for data for and, and i'm gonna say short term i want to say short term because most of your music you produce for right now you're working on is for the season and when i say the season i'm referring from trinidad to Barbados. When I say Trinidad to Barbados, Dominica Trinidad Carnival, March to Carpova, July. What is in store for us? Or what do you have in store for us? I mean, I have a few other projects, other big projects, you know, that I, that I am working on. 
Um, so I don't want to be all super specific to let the cat out of the bag, but yeah. um, I know it's only normal for people to expect that a lot of data right now is buzzing in the business mm -hmm. or creating such a monster track. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are reaching out to data right now, but data kind of it's not a good idea for Dada to take everybody that's reaching out to him because it's about quality control, right? So if I come down and say I want to track you, you're going to hold me down? I mean, I wouldn't hold you down, you know, but I mean, it goes back to, <laughs> <laughs> it goes back to what your projection is. So if you say you're in the industry, like, in the industry that way, okay, let's put it like this, right? I will work on songs that I like, you know what I mean? Because I think songs that I like, I can better be able to express them. As in the case of family, I really like the track, you know what I mean? And I was really motivated to do what it takes for the track to be what it is now. So I want to use that same type of energy. I don't want to water it down. I want to keep the energy 100, you know what I mean? But if I have a whole set of tracks that and some of them are not really feeling so much, then you can you can imagine that it would not be the same type of treatment, right? Mm -hmm, that's so true. the treatment of the track is important for success. That's true. Okay, now uh, you you don't want to let the cat out of the bag. What can Not we it. anticipate? Are you still doing any calypsos for the season? Because I know you work on your little local scene, your little local vibe. Are there because the the sad part about things that are is that we get the music. Uh, I, I mean, I kind of learn a little bit from people like you, people like yeah, like Jovian, people like you know Mark you know, who kind of like school me on a little bit of the, the music and what goes on behind it and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And right. you get the songs and then you think, oh, um, oh, I like that track. I like that track, boy. Uh, and then, you know, it, it goes away. You have a job that is like no other. It's probably the hardest job because you have to listen to lyrics and sometimes not even listening to lyrics and you have to put down a melody, put down something for somebody to for, that will capture somebody uh, or somebody will gravitate towards. What, right. is, what is the process that goes in your mind when you're doing this, when you're, when you're putting together the music? What do you think? For example, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back because I'm familiar with a lot of the songs that you've actually done. Right. I, I remember when you came out, uh, and I'm, so I'm sticking with local for just a little bit, when you came out with, uh, when, with this song, um, you got a ready-made jacket. Yeah, close my <laughs> Yes, trendsetter, yeah. trendsetter, my boy, big him up one time. You 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 produce that, right? And then you also produce you produce one of Prosper. You know what is the name of the song? Prosper. Um, mm, yes. Yeah. Calling. Calling. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you did that, and then yeah. you did um um Pastor Bull. Pastor Bull, right? Yes. <laughs> so you did. Yeah, you did yeah. And these are songs, these are calypsos that we all know. Once you're Dominican, you know the track, right? right. But mm -hmm. you never know is that I'm producing because all you hear is Prosper, Transetter, you know, yeah. all you have, you've even done stuff work with, with Dice, with, with King Dice, right. Right? right? What is the thought process? What is your thought process when you get these people? Because this, this is you transitioning between Soka, between Calypso between Buya and getting a message out there, getting people to gravitate towards the music. Because without the music, the song can be hot, 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 and the reading really not hot, it will be not. Right? Right, right, so, right. How do you how do you get to that stage and you say, okay, I'm gonna make this song like this. What goes through your head? I mean put me in the lab for a little bit. <laughs> I mean it's just a it's just a clarity you have to have. You know, you need to first of all respect music. To know that every song is its own entity, you know what I mean. So, even though I will have three, four tracks working on at the same time, I need to give treat each track with its integrity. With integrity, you know what I mean. So, try to get the best out of the track. So, in my thought process, does be okay. Let me listen to the track and let the track tell me what it wants. You know what I mean? Yeah, the track has to have to speak to me. I will listen over and over and over. And I also have to feel what the person talking about and get the expressions. Do, do they come the and it for you? Like, do they come? Do they come and they sing it for you, or is it just a matter of like, like just words out there? A lot of the time, I get the, what they do is they do demos on a guitar. You know what I mean? So they will sing the track on the guitar just to give me an idea 
or to tell me what the, the chords for the melody would be, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't have to be searching, trying to create a melody. So they would create the melody on the and record us a demo, I don't know, their phone on a recorder or something to send back to me so that I could, um, you know, understand the track, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I would be able to feel whether it would be a fast song or a slower song, depending on the message and the feel, you know what I mean? The texture of, of, of the track. So it's a thing where you have to, you know, listen to the track and treat the track with a lot of respect, you know what I mean? So I don't want, not just because I'm doing 5, 6, Calypso's, B4, I don't do that much right now. But before, back in, the, in these times, in those times, I wouldn't, even though I have seven or eight kinds of working on you, they wouldn't sound the same because each okay. track and is different because each artist or singer or Calypsonian, they are different. So this, the, the, the track needs to reflect the image of the, uh, and the personality of, um, of, the, of the person singing it. So that's why, that's, that, that doesn't really be my thought process. However, I always want there's a certain there's a constant in all of the tracks. I need them to affect the people in a positive way. I need them to affect the listener. Like when they hear it for the first time, like they, they have a wow effect. You know what I mean? That's just for me. That is my satisfaction that I look for from the track when I'm building it. So in terms of using certain drums or certain tones or whatever the case, you know, I will do these things. This is a this is a little detail just to put my signature sound in there. Mm -hmm. And you know it would it would it would it would really be somebody, um, the the, the part that make this song stand out because I don't want to make songs that not sign. No, it makes no sense. I rather scrap the song, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So I I always want to um, I I always want my music to impact people. I don't make flat dead music. You know what I mean. I have life. I'm a jovial person. I need my music to be vibrant, just like me, right? Mm -hmm. That's basically what it is. <laughs> and I know how do you work with just putting something together like you did with family because family was 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 something before it nobody didn't come to you with lyrics and tell you to produce this no thing. no how did you put that together what was going through your mind that moment that you put i mean I, I never i never knew that it was going to be family but when i had the discussion with steven about the track you know steven told me what he was feeling you know what i mean like this is what we should be aiming for. And from the moment he mentioned Skinny, now I know Skinny and Skinny's capabilities, right? I feel like Skinny is one of the better writers in the business. I, I personally feel Skinny is a genius, right? In terms of putting songs together. This man is sick. You know what I mean? So, um, so I kind of was thinking for Skinny in a sense, but kind of embedding my ideas in the music. It's a kind of a science, spiritual kind of a vibe, I'm telling you. It's a deep, deep thing. Now, because, now, if you notice, when Skinny, when Skinny said that when he heard the rhythm, he didn't really feel like, you know, it was something that he wanted to do on his own at first. And then when he heard it back, he's like, nah, he feel like you need to get the free guys on there. That was basically what I was shooting for from the inception of the track. Now, and, you, and we never spoke, so it happened. You brought us back to family, and I'm kind of glad that you did. Um, right. Because there were some, there were some, some questions that I, I wanted to ask along the lines but you know we digress in the conversation um but you you met steven and and he he said to you put something down and i will see what i can do with it first of all i want to big up steven i, yeah, I big up steven. Uh, um uh big him up um he actually wanted to be on this interview he might he might actually just jump in at any time uh but he was in transit um i have known steven longer than you Right. Yeah, like when I say, and I've known you for years, I met Stephen years ago when he, he had like, he was Marshall's DJ and, you know, coming right. on to and stuff back in, back in 2004, 2005, mm -hmm. you know, I met him and, uh, and we, we stayed in touch, you know, um, we were not, I mean, we're not bon gens to say like buddies, buddies, but whenever he'd be coming in the city, he'd always say to me, Hey, you know, I play in here. I play in there. You know, you just, you know, let, let, right, right, right. and let me know. And then it's funny how I, 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 I connected with his, with his wife, you know, and right. it just, just worked. So we've always been in touch. Um, and he, I, 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 I I'm certain, I'm almost certain. He had a lot to do with getting 
you that connection. Do you think it would have been different if Steven was involved in that? I mean, so what happened was was Steven. I like, I like how you go what happened. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> right. Yeah. So I was in Saint Lucia, right? I think I told you. And um, so Steven came and checked me at the hotel because we, we we worked together, right, on a few projects. So um, Stephen was he always wanted me to create a uh, power rhythm, you know what I mean, for him. And he told me that he would shop it around because Stephen, in that sense, would be like an agent in a sense, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So he and Skinny is really good, and uh, me now always wanting to work with Skinny, you know what I mean. Um, we had a discussion, and Skinny came up, and he was saying, me, "You know what? If when when you do the rhythm, I'll send for Skinny to." So he always fought something, you know what I mean, or whatever. So, if Steven wasn't on a uh, part of the project, probably wouldn't have happened that way. Probably, the, and then to be honest, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, that rhythm was still going to be used for another big project because what happened was this, right? I had that rhythm for another artist, another big artist, right? Working on a, but the thing is, well, when I built the rhythm, it was for another artist, I built it for it because he wanted me to build a rhythm for him to do something. And a collaboration again. So I started building that rhythm in particular. But then when Steven um, requested me to do a rhythm, I was like, boy, I feel like, you know, that if I give it to Steven, I will, it's like an invest, I'll be investing more into something. Than, I don't say that what if the other artists wouldn't, wouldn't have done something good with it. But I feel like oh, if I give that rhythm to Steven, yeah, it's like, you know, it, Steven will bring something else, you know. That I didn't have any moment, and but, I did it too. You say that you know, you said that people probably, if you don't know who's international, Steven, I knew him as DJ Steven, so I still call him Steven, and he he, he rebranded as international, international um, Steven, right? He yeah. he is one of the biggest DJs out there, and yeah. when I have a DJ, he does not he don't like to stay behind the the turntables. He'll jump out in front and fly in the crowd and get right. people going, right? And I. When 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 you mentioned that there was going there was this, this collaboration going on, I knew for a fact if if it could have been a cat on the track, Steven would push it. <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 yeah. And and that is and yeah. that's the bottom line. He could have anything. Yeah, have yeah, yeah, track, yeah. I feel yeah. it would have blown up because he would have gotten he would have found some way to make people get hyped up about it. It just so happened the track blew out. Or blew up, up, up without you know him having to to actually go out there. He haven't even started really promoting it, you know. No, he, I didn't. He keep telling me that every day. He tell me, boy, I don't start to promote that yet. <laughs> Look at what the chat doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> but Stephen, Stephen really, Stephen was instrumental in that. You know what I mean? I think he facilitated the connection between myself and Skinny officially. You know what I mean? Um, it really was all that he needed to do. You know what I mean? Because I have had that, you know, that desire to work with Skinny from ever since. Because I, I mean, Skinny, I feel like Skinny is uh, an artist that has so much talent for for a lot of different styles that I want to do. You know what I mean? I feel like he can, he is one of the artists that can execute a lot of the ideas that I have. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to work with Skinny and then Steven brought it up and I was like, yeah, well, yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's see what happens. So when the project started, I was I wanted to make the best impression ever, you know what I mean, on all of the guys. So that's where, where my thought was as far as that. But so to answer the question, if Steven wasn't a part of the project, probably wouldn't have happened that way. But something else would have happened because the rhythm is still a big rhythm, right? Yes, it is definitely a big rhythm. But it wouldn't have been that, but it would be something. That, uh, you know, um, I, I see a lot of, of big things in the future. Uh, for you, you know, right. and I want to, I know you've always, um, I know that because I know you and I can speak, I right. can speak to that effect or to that, to, to that, um, to say that I know you've always pushed your island people, you know, you've always, um, I remember you making a track and you, you reaching out to artists in Dominica to come on the track and I, I know you've been turned down and I know you're not going right. to be turned anymore. <laughs> Yeah. This is uh, they'll be coming for you now. Yeah, but, I'll, I'll turn them down now. Uh, but I, and that's what exactly what I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you, you know, in spite of you know what 
what, how you may have been treated in the past, you know, right. in, and I, and I'm speaking, I'm speaking because I know right. I'm, I'm not assuming I'm speaking, right. you know, you know, I know, right. Yeah. Despite how you've been treated in the past, I want to still encourage you to continue to work with your local artists. You've now opened up a, a major door for, for, for the genre of bouillon, right? That's been around for so many years. You've now opened up a door in terms of collaboration between um, small island um, artists and big artists. You've, you've opened up a door for small islanders to become big artists, right? right. And, uh, and I want to encourage you and tell you, you know, um, you know, sometimes after a while, our head gets a little too big and we cannot walk mm. through the bounce on both sides. Right. So, I'm, yeah. I, I'm telling you, don't mm. let it come to that. You know, a lot of times we will stay humble, stay like right. the person you've always been. Right. You know, uh, and, and, and if it means you have somebody to check you, when I say check you, um, have somebody to say, if you see me doing shit, check mm. me and tell me, what, what are you doing now? Like, since when you're doing that? Well, no, yeah, I can't. Exactly. With my shoe. Uh, cause some of them with my shoe. All of a sudden, I can't come in with my shoe. <laughs> right? You get fresh now. You get fresh. <laughs> you get fresh. Yeah. And you know, you know what we were talking about re renovating the, the studio? Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's why I just threw that in. Right? So uh -huh. I know, I know you, you, people, we cannot help when fame happens. Sometimes we don't even want to be pompous or right. to to be um what we call to play gras or to play bougie right, but it right. happens right and it's all it has a lot to do with the people the, the, the new people that we're associated with or are coming to contact with i want to tell you if it means to have somebody to check you you know remain the person that you are because the person that you are is what got you to where you are right? yeah, absolutely right so, so remain that humble person I want to encourage you and I want to tell you, you know, we look for bigger things, you know, to come. Um, I, I want to, before, before I go, I want to ask you one last question. How does your family feel now? Your family, how do they feel <laughs> about family? I mean, everybody excited about the track, you know what I mean? But I don't feel like everybody understand the magnitude, the significance of the success of the track, you know what I mean? Because it goes back to the whole education and knowledge of of people what but like what we know about the music business around here you know what i mean so i mean as far as how they feel like know they're excited and i mean those that know will feel like yeah boy you know that you have something big on your hands and then there are those that feel like yeah you have all the money now you know what i mean you have all you making me money yeah have some money. give me something you know what i mean but, yeah, but I, I will say this though, as far as me changing, you know, I I can I don't see myself becoming a person that I am not comfortable with, you know what I mean? You know, me to be a person that is comfortable in my skin. You know what I mean? I have always been that way and I will say that this is a moment that I've been waiting for and I've been working towards, you know what I mean? So so now that I have that opportunity and I have that moment, it's not something that can change me because I don't see it as something that should change me. You know, as you say, is because I am the way I am. That's how that's how I became who I am. Mm -hmm. So why change a working formula? You know what I mean? Why become pompous? Why become swell headed? It makes no sense to me. So I prefer to continue doing my work. The most important thing for me right now is to stay focused on the work because the having this track is a, is a great opportunity a great achievement and what he's doing for it right now is great for my career and the most important thing right now for me now is doing more like that you know what i mean so i if i change the formula now i cannot get more you know you know what i mean so i have to just remain doing what i'm doing and as far as working with people around here local or dominican i should say because the term local have a kind of negative connotation on it and the way like use local i use dominican Mm -hmm. Um, I will work with people that, um, that I need to work with. You know what I mean? I don't have, I, I don't feel like because something is happening for me out there right now, I should forget people, but mm -hmm. also it should, that, that success should encourage our artists to, to, uh, put in the extra effort to sharpen their skills. Because I mean, even for me, I have to, um, maintain a certain level of quality. You know what I mean? So. 
I don't feel like the person that cannot sing a whole lot note right, or they you know they cannot really write properly, they write all sort of crap and all them nonsense going on. And um, you know, if if you do that sort of magic, if you're with your with your and call yourself an artist, you you don't expect somebody to work with somebody like me and, and you expect me to, yeah, I You know what I mean? You don't do something like that, right? So I mean, it it is common sense that you know the best should work with the best so i only want to work with the best not because i feel like the people that are not the best yet don't have the talent but it, i think they should try to become better at their craft practice because i practice a lot is this is not an accident what happened in there with the music for me you know it's not an accident i've been working towards that my whole life putting in all of the extra hours days and months reading books watching videos tutorials practicing practicing over and over and now that it happened, you know, they say the formula for success is when um, opportunity meets preparation, right? Mm -hmm. So that is basically what had happened there. I have put in my 10,000 hours in this thing, and it is paying dividends. So I just want to be an example to the people aspiring, both artists and producers alike, that this is what can happen if you stay focused on one thing. Don't try to change and change and change and change. You have to stick to one thing, because... Skinny made mention of Denny segment. You know, Skinny mentioned of Denny segment. If you notice the illusions and them sticking to that Denny segment thing, and that's why they are so many hits right now, because they stick to the Denny segment. And now the he made specific mention of the what the rhythm, the family rhythm doesn't sound like a like a, a, a hardcore bouillon, you know what I mean? Because I also see the felt the need to soften the touch of Booyo. I feel like Booyo needed a mainstream type of sound. You know what I mean? So, if we give them the hardcore version of Booyo, then they wouldn't um, ex they wouldn't um, feel it the same way that... They would not know how to feel. Absolutely. <laughs> that's it. You know what I mean? So, I felt the need to bridge the music a bit. It's the same way as a Booyo rhythm, but with a softer touch. You know that? So, that would end, that would uh, another culture can express themselves once. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I want to big up, you know, all of the viewers, everybody who's come on. Um, if you're viewing right now, I hope you hit that share button. And I see all who that come on and comment. Make sure you share the link so that somebody can know about Dada, the family man. You know, make sure you share that link below. Um, and and if you if you miss the show, you can always come back and look at it again. It stays on my timeline. In addition to that, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on on Castbox, on Listen Notes, um, uh, hopefully on Spotify. You can also now catch it on Digicel Play. So you right now the live show is on Digicel Play. Um, the coming up uh, the weeks coming up, you're gonna be getting all of the shows. The recorded versions are gonna be stored on there. You can go back and actually, and that is not just in Dominica. That is all. Every single where Digicel Play goes, go. <laughs> right. That is exactly what's gonna be happening. And and I want to say thanks to all of you who tuned in uh, and and came on. Dada, thanks to you. You know, for 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 for, for giving us your time. Uh, I want to yeah, big man. up everybody who's been part of this venture with you on a big up Marshall and, and Bungie who could, who could not be on and 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 Stephen who wanted to be on but he was yeah. like, that, you, that was coming and and he said yeah. he says to me Jill I get up at 7 20 but I'm not sure if I can go for immigration fast enough <laughs> you know he got up <laughs> at 7 20 and he tell he said to me send me the link if I can connect I will connect right and I sent him the link and he has not viewed the link so I know he's not Right, right. Yet, right, right. And, and he wanted to be on as well, and and hopefully, you know, we'll get him on. Uh, when 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 you win, <laughs> when you win, you know. Yeah, exactly. I want to, right. I want to wish you, you know, all the best. I'm sure you have lots of tracks in your back pocket that's going to be released over the next couple of weeks. We still have a few weeks before Carnival actually right. um, um happens, and and there's a lot that can happen in that in that short space of yeah. time. And I want to tell you to keep pressing on, keep pushing. A lot of people have been sending a lot of comments on the timeline. If you want to go back on and, and the people like, um, like Jarrell and Mema and, and Sari, um, Elwin, um, has also said, you know, good job, Dada. Keep creating amazing music. D Sugar, who is, who's locked in. She says she's so proud of you. Aretha, 
our child says integrity and humility um and uh, people people have been comment commenting Kerry says one thing i like about that and he's straight no bullshit talk straight up you know um people have been commenting and really feeling your music really feeling um feeling the vibe and and really enjoying what you put out this season and, and i want to I want to encourage you and tell you to keep doing what you're doing. Um, don't let anybody stop. Keep your eye on the price and keep working on that formula because it, apparently it's working, right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's working. Anybody you want to shout out before we wrap up the show? I mean, yeah, of course. Um, I must big up Stephen. You know what I mean? Stephen has been a great addition to my work family. And I, I guess I've been a great one to his as well. Um, Stephen is a special brother, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, apart from the whole just making a link, <laughs> apart from the whole just making a link with, um, with that track, me and Stephen reason almost every day, you know what I mean? And on other stuff. And Stephen is as genuine as they come, you know what I mean? Stephen has been open and very honest and organic with all of the moves that he has made for me. And um, you know, and helping to advance my career as a as a music producer in this business, I must give special recognition to Stephen because um, I feel like Stephen is one of the guys, one of the gems in this business. You know what I mean? That you don't get to meet good people all the time, and Stephen was was that. You know what I mean? So I want to because make special. I don't just thank Stephen. Remember to thank thank Z because you know she's a small islander, and I. Yeah. Feel I feel she have a lot to play in that, you know, because if if he didn't touch those small island, he would have said he would have said Trinidad, right? Yeah, yeah I well, even she told me that I didn't even get a chance to meet her, you know, when I was in Saint Lucia because they were going France or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I didn't get a chance to meet up. But I have to really big her up as well because you know she have welcomed me as part of the family as well. You know what I mean? So I, yeah, Stephen and his wife, you know, want to make special mention of them. Also, Skinny. Skinny, I mean, yo, Skinny's a fantastic talent, you know, for, for a guy to, to create such a monster hit. And not only that, he has been creating hits over the years. Skinny is just a super, super talent that has a lot to do in this business, you know what I mean? And I am sure as time progresses, the more we work together, the more hits I can pull out of him like that, you know what I mean? And also Marshall and Bungie, because those two have been instrumental and very supportive behind the scenes of me, and also for them welcoming me as part of the team as well, you know what I mean? So, I'm going to be like the whole family unit, you know what I mean? The whole five-man crew, you know what I mean? Which is, yeah. that, that create that kind of a monster that, that kind of change shift the paradigm of of um of soca you know what i mean from ever since it's, re it's released and um obviously on the big up everybody that has been supportive of me kerry you may mention of kerry Aurel, jerel you know everybody you as well you know what i mean from ever since the track release you know you have always been there um you know saying that i know you could do it and you know showing that that you have been supportive and you know of me and my thoughts because sometimes you know as a music producer, you, you're just like a scientist, you know, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of thoughts going through it, but you're not sure if you're crazy. You know what I mean? So, when you get the kind of evidence, it's like reassurance that you're not really crazy. Or you may be crazy a little bit, you know what I mean? But yeah, people are just like you. <laughs> <laughs> right, so big up everybody on Facebook, that big up um, Tilly, you know, um, who else? Um, big up Tad, you know, Tad S. James, yeah. for recognizing, you know, the efforts and uh big up mystic dj mystic major mystic get it right yeah, big up major mystic you know for being there from day one on this endeavor and um big up dj spawner because spawner was also there behind the scenes as well as as far as um getting it to pedal the track you know from release um you know yeah basically big up everybody that has been supportive over the years and continue to be supportive at this moment and I want I have a message for everybody. We're gonna do it for real this time. You see this time? We're gonna do it for real. Which is go on the international level. That's where it is. We're gonna do it big. Cause I feel that is the only way for us right now is to go up. You know what I mean? But not up in a sense where we have to climb on people's back. You yeah. know what I mean? Up 
in the in an organic honest way you know what i mean putting the work get the results um you know do the business for what the business is worth that's, that's it. it that's it that's our time